live from London, England. It's the Cube covering .next Conference Europe 2018. Brought to you by Nutanix. Good morning from London, England. I'm Stu Miniman with my co-host Yup Piscar, and you're watching the Cube's two-day coverage of Nutanix.next 2018 here at the Excel Center. Welcome to our program. Uh, Yup and I are going to spend a couple of minutes uh, giving our thoughts on Nutanix, what's happening in the ecosystem, what we're hearing from the customers. Uh, so so Yup, 3,500 uh, people here. Uh, think back two years ago when they held the first show uh, in, in Europe, in Vienna. Uh, you and I talked there, it was a much smaller show. Uh, Nutanix is growing. Uh, you know, some strong momentum here. Uh, generally, as a, you, you say, these kind of shows, you usually have the true believers, uh, but uh, you know, it is nice to see that a company, Nutanix, now nine years old, you know, their customers seem pretty passionate. Uh, they, 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 they love what it does for them, their for careers. Uh, one of the uh, uh, executives, it was uh, Sunil up on stage yesterday, said, hey, uh, you might not get fired for buying an IBM or a VMware, but you know, you get promoted uh, for uh, you know, buying Nutanix. So, what What's your impressions? Tell me what you're hearing from your peers and compatriots uh, at the event. So, you know, what, I've, what I'm seeing around me here is uh, the buzz is, you know, definitely much bigger than a couple of years ago. The show's bigger, um, it seems to attract more customers, you know, from all over, you know, small companies, big companies. So seeing that buzz compared to a couple of years ago kind of proves that Nutanix has a place in the industry and that their products are, you know, gaining traction with, with customers. Um, and looking at the keynotes from yesterday and today, I you know I see a lot of announcements. I see a lot of work, not just in the you know the products customers are using now, but also kind of in a forward-looking we want to go here fashion. Um, and that you know that's exciting to me because you know Nutanix is growing, you know, beyond just a core infrastructure company. They are building a portfolio. They're building a platform. And I think you know what from what I've been hearing from customers, you know it does have traction. Customers like the direction Nutanix is going, but I can't help but wonder, you know, how many customers are you know, already using these services or planning to use these in the near future? Yeah, uh, and one of the things I look at, and I, I think I've seen good progress here, is this isn't just taking the US show and shipping it over to Europe. Uh, Nutanix has many years of doing uh, road shows, it's the, uh, I think, like dot .next on the road, things like that. Uh, in the keynotes, we're seeing you know, European, not just European customers, but uh, the, the demo this morning was, uh, you know, senior SE, uh, Nutanix woman from uh, Spain, and you, you see culture. When I walk around the show floor, uh, I know a lot of the vendors here, and it is their European presence, and, you know, hear good proof points of what they're doing. I, I mean, you, you're, you're from here in Europe. What, 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 what do you hear and say? Yeah, so, it, you know, I agree. This is not just a carbon copy of the US show. It has its own identity. It attracts its own customers, its own partners. You know, walking around the show floor, I do see a lot of customers that I recognize. I do see a lot of uh, partners from the Netherlands or from Europe that I recognize, that I work with. Um, so seeing, you know, all that attention from the, uh, from the crowd, that, that helps. And seeing, you know, Nutanix as a company, not just US based, but focusing on Europe as well. Yeah, uh, want to get your opinion, you know, how's Nutanix doing on painting their vision? Uh, you know, I, I think back to early days, uh, Deeraj and the team, uh, you know, have a clear direction as to where they want to take things, uh, and they, they, I think they do a good job of focusing on the customer, and laying out a vision without getting too far over their skis, uh, you know, Today I look at it, you know, most customers today, you know, they're really using, you know, I'm using HCI, probably for more than just VDI and you know, starting to spread out, but when you start talking about from the core to the essentials to the enterprise, some of that is, most of the customers aren't ready, but they need to be hearing a lot of these things. What's your take, uh, what, what are some of your takeaways so far? So I think you've, you've uh, said it exactly right. So, you know, even though customers are only using core products uh, mainly, um, it does help that Nutanix is laying down this vision uh, of you know, next steps for customers. Because you know, even though you, know, you could say infrastructure is commodity and the cloud is overruling on-prem installations, it's still, you know, customers are struggling to go from you know, their current on-prem three-tier uh, uh, virtualization layer up to you know, a, an application focus in the cloud um, and you know, Nutanix telling that story, Nutanix telling, okay, this should be the next step, after that you can do this, that helps to guide customers to not only where Nutanix wants the customer to go, obviously, but also from that customer-centric perspective, helping customers, you know, navigating that difficult swamp 
of you know, the next step of cloud, of applications, and moving from an infrastructure focus to that application focus. Yeah, uh, you know, look, there, there's a mental map I use for it when, I, when I look at this. I, I kind of say that the world of the future uh, you know, is definitely, I, I prefer the term multi-cloud, but that definitely includes my, 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 my own data centers or service provider data centers where I manage more of it. Call, let, let, let's call that you know, the, the private piece of the hybrid and public cloud, and then of course there's a lot of SaaS in there. And when I put a, custom, a company in there and say, okay, do they lean a little bit too far? Of course, Amazon, you know, very heavily, uh, you know, towards the the, the public cloud. Uh, but we saw an announcement, AWS Outposts, where they're saying, hey, they're they're you know going deeper uh, with VMware and also with their own stack to to be able to go to the private. Hey, take a company like like Dell leans very heavily uh, towards private. They have. VMware and Pivotal to help get them a little bit more to public. VMware going deeper into public. Nutanix definitely leans a little bit towards private, but they're doing enough uh, in the public cloud. Uh, they're, they're making partnerships. Uh, I actually like the messaging I heard on Cloud Native this morning, saying that look, this is just like cloud is mostly an operational model, and sure, there's a lot of great innovation in the public cloud, but cloud native doesn't mean I built it in the cloud. It built it's, it's microservices and you know containerization and all those. things. Things, even serverless, uh, you know, we can debate whether that can only be in the public cloud. Um, so, you know, the hybrid message, uh, I, I, I'd like to see a little bit more clarity from, from Nutanix as to where that has, and it's definitely feedback I've gotten from customers, um, but for the most part, I, I think they're doing a solid job. What, yeah, I, I agree, so, I, you know, I, I think it's a matter of perspective, right? Where are your roots, where do you come from? Yeah. So, for VMware, for Nutanix, it makes most sense to um, to go from on-prem into cloud into SaaS, whereas you know Amazon was born in the cloud. They you know they attract developers, they attract application builders, website builders, and so they have they have the different perspective, right? So they're they're now realizing okay, on-prem has a has a place too, and so the difference is it's just a matter of perspective and and what type of customers are you serving? Right. So VMware and Nutanix are serving the enterprise customer that has you know big legacy routes in, in the data center, and they're helping those customers move towards the public cloud. But the other way around is just as valid because there are so many companies that you know, built an e-com solution on the public cloud and are moving back to on-prem for cost reasons, for security reasons, you know, whichever reason is, is, is there for, uh, uh, for a customer. But both perspectives you know, make total sense to me. And, and if, you com if you compare you know, Outpost to the work Nutanix is now doing with Carbon, um, you know, technologically it isn't all that different, but I think it's a matter of perspective. Which customers are we helping in which, in which way? Yeah, you, Paul, actually I'll, I'll put a fine point on this. Uh, when, when I look back to the early days of Nutanix, what their mission was is they took hyperscale, what the really big guys were doing, and they were going to bring that to the enterprise. They've done a great job of packaging that. Um, you know, in early days we talk about the, you know, the hyperscale companies really can put in a lot of high value resources to build what they need. The enterprise doesn't have you know, a big team of PhDs to throw out things, they don't have the amount of resources, so they will spend money to buy what they have. So that's what Nutanix has done, that they've got you know, great things to show for it. Yeah, public company, over $7 billion of, of, of market cap, um, so they can grow that, they've met the customers where they are, and uh, definitely are a trusted partner to help bring them towards what Nutanix calls the enterprise cloud, uh, what most of us call that, that multi-cloud or hybrid cloud world. All right, you, thank you so much uh, for, for helping us dig in with some of the analysis. Uh, be sure to stay with us for a full day, second day of coverage. As always, turn to thecube.net for all the interviews. I'm Stu Miniman, and thank you for watching theCUBE. Thank <laughs> you.